Welcome back, everyone. A school district in Austin, Texas, is facing backlash after it reportedly encouraged its students to attend Austin's annual Pride Parade earlier this month. They posted the details on their school district's website, saying, quote, Staff, students, and their families are invited to represent Austin ISD in the annual Austin Pride Parade. We are hashtag AISD proud to celebrate our LGBTQIA plus students, staff, and families, and to highlight our commitment to creating a safe, supportive, and inclusive environment for all. It says Pride costumes and rainbow colors are encouraged. It also offered free shuttles to students and their families who attended the Pride Parade as well as a free Austin ISC Pride t-shirt. With me now to discuss is Turning Point USA contributor Morgan McMichael. Morgan, thanks for being with us. It's great to have you. Thank you for having me on. Of course. So I just love how liberals always try to make the claim that the LGBTQIA plus community isn't targeting the children, yet here they are, a school district in Austin is encouraging students to attend this madness. Morgan, what are your thoughts? Of course, it is absolutely ridiculous. My family actually lives in Austin, Texas, and I saw some reporters on the ground of this Pride Parade. And of course, ongoers were saying how it's not sexually explicit. All this is is embracing your sexuality and kids should be educated on this type of thing, which is absolutely ridiculous. No child should ever be exposed to a Pride Parade. It is sexually explicit content on the streets and it should frankly be illegal by having, I mean, there were breasts showing and it's just completely inappropriate for any child to be involved. And then when they say that we're not indoctrinating your kids, when clearly a school district here is even encouraging students to attend, I mean, where, what grounds do they have by sending out these new newsletters and who knows what they're saying in the classrooms, encouraging students maybe even to come out and what kind of LGBTQ education is actually being taught in Austin ISD, which is arguably one of the worst school districts in our country right now. It certainly is. There is no question about that. It is extremely alarming. It should concern every parent, uh, and it should be illegal. I do agree with you. You know, I was actually just in Austin for the American Liberty Awards, and I've got to say, I am not shocked that all of this is happening there. Uh, of all places, I mean, Texas, right? You would think it would be conservative, but Austin is right. more out of control than places like West Hollywood or even San Francisco. I mean, it is so crazy there, and I, I was honestly shocked to see it all there myself. Uh, but it's really just sad that it's even making its way into these conservative states, right? So I think this should serve as a warning to everyone not to get too comfortable in your red states because it's going to come to you too. Um, you know, I think uh, the targeting of children is is just so sad, and, and it clearly doesn't end in Austin. Actually, over in California and Maryland, there's a new summer camp that's now available to children ages 12 through 18 called mm -hmm. Brave Trails. Let's take a look at what this is all about and then we'll come right back to you. My day as head counselor at an LGBTQ summer camp in 60 seconds. I'm up around 7.15, then after breakfast, it's off to our camp-wide meeting where each day we raise a different identity flag of the queer community. Then campers are off to their activities where they can choose from things like photography, dance, sports, and puppetry. I have some planning and admin work to do so I sneak up to the Hall of Elders, a place on campus dedicated to the queer changemakers and icons that came before us. While campers are in their midday workshops, I check in with some of my teammates and help lead our daily staff meeting. Next is one of my favorite parts of the day, getting to lead the drag workshop, where I teach campers how to do their drag makeup and they learn the art and history of drag. Evening brings the variety show, where our young people get to showcase their incredible talent to the rest of camp. I wrap up my evening check-ins around 11, then it's off to bed to do it all over again tomorrow. Wow, I think disturbing might be an understatement here. I mean, how upsetting is this? And let's not forget it's just this, this camp here, right? Uh, these people, this alphabet community, has also infiltrated the Boy Scouts, the Eagle Scouts. So I guess just good old-fashioned summer camp is now a thing of the past. What do you make of this, Morgan? The summer camps that I grew up going to apparently no longer exist with this replacement. And it's not a shock that this is happening in California of all states. But I mean, I feel bad for these kids that are going to these camps and these parents who are so confused, these children who are confused with their own identities. And instead of actually being told the truth, 
and being led on a correct path, they're going to these types of indoctrination camps, quite frankly. I mean, I don't know how these camps are legal either. I mean, they are taking children and just affirming these camps and these kids. And it's really sad to see if I'm being honest. Um, I mean, these are just a bunch of confused kids that are going to a camp in the wilderness. And I fear what's to come after this. I mean, they're creating a total army of social justice alphabet warriors. They most certainly are. And it's sad, too, because this is probably just the norm now for kids growing up today. I mean, to you and I, it's shocking because we actually had a normal yeah. childhood. But this is just standard in today's world. It's just mind boggling. All right, Morgan, moving on to the next topic here. I have to ask you about this one because I'm just blown away. Kid Rock was caught drinking a Bud Light following all of the recent Dylan Mulvaney, Anheuser-Busch controversy. Now, this is particularly strange because, as we know, Kid Rock himself was more or less sort of paving the way for this boycott after he released a oh. video shooting down cans of the beer, ultimately slashing the company's earnings by $40 billion. What do you think is going on here? Why would he ever go back to drinking that garbage, especially knowing what they stand for? I mean, we've seen conservatives boycott Bud Light across our country, again, losing billions of dollars. I definitely will say it was a shock to see Kid Rock drinking a Bud Light. I mean, even if I was at a concert and that's the only beer that they had to drink, I would tell my future husband, hey, like, you're not drinking tonight because it's the principle of the boycott, especially when it's someone of that caliber who is well known and also paved the way and made such a large statement in the boycott. I think it was a little bit dumb of his decision to go out and drink a beer that night, uh, seeing that it was Bud Light, and just created more of a controversy of like, hey, where do you actually stand? So I think it was a pretty dumb decision on his part. And I do think conservatives should still stand strong and not drink Bud Light anymore. I'm with you. I think the boycott needs to continue. And it is disappointing that he would opt for that, even if it was, let's say, the only option, as you'd mentioned. I would yep. choose not to drink at all if that were my only option. Exactly. I don't know how you could ever just make a pass for these people. But I think that is a good example for our viewers watching and all Americans, really, is that when we boycott something, when we realize the evil behind these corporations, we really need to stand our ground and hold to it. I mean, we talk all the time about creating a parallel economy and voting with your dollar. So it is so important that we put our money where our mouth is and stand firm on our decision to boycott. I mean, it's not just because it's trendy this week, we're going to stop shopping at Target. Right. I mean, that would be like if you went back to Target after all your viral videos there and right. started shopping there I was there just going to say it's the same thing. It's the same thing with the Target controversies. I know multiple people that have started to shop at Target again. They're like, well, Pride Month is over. You know, there's no longer tucking bathing suits in the front of the store. But based off the principle of no, we are boycotting this brand because of the evil that is going on behind the scenes. And we will continue to boycott more and more companies. And 100 percent, we do need to encourage the parallel economy and supporting companies that actually do represent our values. Amen to that. All righty, Morgan, last one for you. If you have been on social media at any point during the last week, I'm sure you <laughs> regrettably at some point had oh, yeah. to see the obnoxious face of Rachel Zegler, the lead actress who plays Snow White in the new upcoming live action remake from Disney. Now, she was sobbing for some reason. I couldn't even tell you why because I refused to take the video off mute. But she's basically very ungrateful for this role she's been giving and has a lot of negative comments regarding the original Snow White film. Anyhow, fast forward, and now the son of the original Snow White director is actually slamming this live-action remake, saying, quote, his father and Walt Disney would be turning in their graves if they saw what was happening here. Morgan, what are your thoughts on this one? They absolutely would be turning in their graves. Look back, 1937, Snow White was the first lie or was the first uh, full length film of a Disney princess. I love Snow White growing up and Rachel Zegler. It's actually despicable behavior, the way that she's treating her own character. If you hate so Snow White so much, then why would you play that character in the first place? This story doesn't need to be reimagined. It doesn't need to be re-engineered. We don't need to get rid of the, of the prince and the saving. And so I think this actor just hates her role so much and is so woke and has bought into the Disney wokeness. And I honestly, I I hope that he continues to speak out because they would be turning in their grave. I think Walt Disney would look at Disney nowadays and be completely disgusted by these films that are coming out and how they've completely morphed and changed the stories. Because here's the thing is when a remake and a live action is made, 
look at how Beauty and the Beast was done. It was a beautiful film that actually encapsulated the original Beauty and the Beast film into the live action. And Snow White has just been completely torn apart by the liberal wokeness of Hollywood. You're right. It's so sad to see all of our classic childhood favorites being destroyed by the woke culture and these ungrateful people like Rachel Zegler who think it's all about them. And let's remake the story based on what I think and feel. No, that's not what you were hired for. I guess Disney's yeah. going in a completely different direction now, but I think it's safe to say we would all appreciate uh, sticking to the classic timeline and uh, original story rather than veering off and appeasing the alphabet mafia because I don't think they even appreciate anything and they'll always find something to complain about. So you'll never win with them, right? <laughs> True. I mean, I don't think it's that hard to just make a remake of a movie into a live action with good actors and remaking the film on the script. It's not that hard to do. And when it's done right, the box office numbers speak for themselves. And honestly, I think Disney is trying to see how many Disney Plus subscribers they can lose <laughs> and how much money they can lose in the box office. Because, I mean, we've already seen their quarterly numbers come out and they have gone down the toilet losing millions of dollars in the box office, even after The Little Mermaid came out. And and I think we're going to see something very similar with this film once it comes out in 2024. I think you're right about that. And sadly, I hope you are right about that because Disney needs to be taught a lesson and they need to be boycotted as well. As sad as it makes me because I was an OG Disney lover. I just, you know, we don't get our money where our mouth is. So <laughs> Morgan, we're very all time here today. But thank you so much for joining us. Where can people find you for more? You can find me all on Turning Point USA channels. And if you can spell my name, M-O-R-G-O-N-N, -N, I'm on all social medias. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. We'd like to welcome you to our new home for uncensored news and hard-hitting talk shows. If you're tired of cable companies and social media giants chipping away at your most basic and important right, freedom of speech, by shadow banning, demonetizing, censoring, and policing every single one of your posts, then One America News on Locals is just what you've been looking for. Finally, you'll have the freedom to express your point of view and stay connected with like-minded fellow patriots. And the best part is, OAN on Locals is only five bucks a month. All of our credible, honest, unbiased reporting, ad-free talk shows, and exclusive content, all at the fraction of the cost of cable. So to watch, just click the Join button to get the news you can't get anywhere else.